and Arthur Lutschak. How do you say your name? Lutschak. Lutschak. Sorry. So, so Arthur will tell us about um, brain learning mechanism and consciousness. What a topic to talk about. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you so much for uh, kind inv invitations to uh, give this talk. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, my slides are. Great, thank you. Okay, so uh, try to imagine what would happen if we could build a computer which would be smarter than thousands of professors taken together. Well, all the problems with uh, climate change would be probably solved in a week like that. The unified theory of physics, of quantum physics, and uh, gravity would be probably solved in a year. Uh, what else? Uh, treatment for cancer would be solved in a few months. So uh, all of those possibilities are there if we can build such computers which are smarter than humans. So we are currently on good way to develop some good uh, uh, artificial intelligence, but still we are probably missing some important ingredients. So let's look maybe in the brain to get some additional inspirations to really get this uh, computer smarter than we are. So. Uh, how brain operates. So it is believed that the uh, main ingredient it is these neurons, which have uh, many dendrites, and they have these little synapses. So when we are learning something, what is uh, happening that those synapses are changing strength. So uh, if we know exactly the rule, how those synapses are changing, maybe we can build this computer smarter than we are. And we know quite a bit about these uh, synaptic changes. However, when we try to build computer based on this, what we know currently, it still doesn't work as well as our brain, so it suggests that something is missing. So uh, what, how to approach this? So I was thinking, uh, let's take a step back and let's think what uh, cells want, and cells including neurons. And what I was thinking is that maybe what really cells like is to maximize energy, so to get as much food as possible and uh, to lose as little energy on movement as possible. So with these simple assumptions, uh, I was trying to figure out how to uh, find some rules for this changing synaptic, uh, uh, synaptic uh, connections. And uh, so this is what I will tell you uh, in this slide. And this was published just this year in Nature Machine Intelligence, and it was chosen for cover story. And sorry about bragging about it, but I couldn't resist. Uh, so uh, let's think uh, for neurons to maximize uh, energy, they need to uh, stimulate blood vessels. So if they stimulate blood vessels, then blood vessels expand and gives more nutrition to neurons. And the best strategy to expand these blood vessels for a neuron is to convince other neurons that in synchrony, they can stimulate those blood vessels that is the most effective to get the most uh, nutritious. However, the trick is that if neuron is active too much, it spends a lot of energy. So uh, it leads to this uh, that neurons try to have this maximum impact with minimum cost, this uh, what we call lazy neuron principle. So using this principle, we derived some uh, rule how to modify synapses. And don't worry about this uh, equation. It just says that uh, to modify those uh, synaptic changes, what neuron really needs to do is to compare the level of activity currently with this what predicts. So neuron has to be this little predictive machine, it has to predict what activity I will have in next 20, 20, next 10 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, and later compare is this activity exactly as uh, predicted, and if not, then based on this difference, we'll adjust uh, synapses. So, uh, uh, we apply this uh, predictive uh, learning rule in some artificial neural networks, and it worked uh, uh, quite well. Also, we did some experiments and show that uh, neurons indeed uh, uh, it's possible to uh, make predictions. Uh, what is the activity? What will be the activity in 10, uh, 20, or 50 milliseconds later? So it means that neurons are probably much smarter than we give them credit for. Uh, one other thing here I wanted to mention is that 
this comparison of actual with, actual with predicted activity, it's uh, just surprise that how we define surprise when something is uh, different from our expectations. So keep this in mind and uh, I, I will come back to that. So uh, the other thing uh, related to these uh, predictions is that now most neuroscientists believe that brains are operate like predictive machine. When we see something, it's not that we are just analyzing this image, but rather we are analyzing this image in context what we had before. So brain is all the time actively predicting, predicting what we will see and is comparing how it uh, is consistent with our predictions. And uh, we still don't know how brain is doing those predictions. And our contribution is that maybe by having this predictive neurons, this smart neurons, we can, uh, this is the way how brain is doing this uh, quite complicated predictions. So uh, to make the predictions, uh, uh, to generate this uh, predicted activity, uh, it implies that patterns of activity generated spontaneous by the brain, like for example during sleep, has to be quite similar to activity evoked by different uh, external stimuli. And I spent most of my career uh, looking how surprisingly similar are patterns of neuronal activity during uh, internally generated and uh, evoked by external stimuli, uh, which is consistent with this uh, predictive brain hypothesis. So uh, let's go to uh, consciousness. And here I uh, define consciousness in very narrow way as uh, our awareness. So if you are aware of some stimuli, it means that you are conscious of that stimuli. And uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, suggestions that this uh, surprise is, uh, that uh, consciousness is re related to surprise. So for example, here is a picture from uh, my office uh, building. Um, and uh, there is a lot of details, but if there is some green UFO uh, uh, appearing, so it is something what you wouldn't predict, all your conscious will be focused on this green UFO, uh, that this is the most surprising, and you will be the most conscious of this particular Thing. And there is a lot of electrophysiological evidences that indeed consciousness is uh, tightly linked to surprise. So what I told you is that neurons to maximize energy, they need to minimize surprise to adjust those weights. But it takes uh, minutes or hours to make these changes to, uh, to, to, to adjust this surprise. However, when there is some single cell, for example, and is uh, detecting that there is different concentration of substances than expected, it can, it can make move right away to minimize this uh, surprise. And it's similar with neurons, that there is this neuronal adaptation process where neurons, when stimulated with some constant stimuli, they will adjust uh, to a uh, different activity level. So this is well established. But now we will enter speculation. So here it is just uh, mostly speculation. So my interpretation of this is that neurons are adjusting its activity to predicted levels. So instead of doing this, uh, in addition to doing this slowly by adjusting synapses, neurons right away uh, try to adjust its activity to what they believe is really going on. So by having such uh, neurons connected in the new network, it gives much bigger power because now neurons are not only ch exchanging information, what is the stimulus, but also what are my predict what are the predictions of each neuron and what are the expectations of uh, each neuron. And uh, um, this, that this adaptation has something to do with consciousness is, uh, as I said, speculations, but there are some evidences supporting it. For example, different anesthetics are working in different way, but all of them are affecting adaptations. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, consciousness is on continuum, that even single neurons, when they are trying to adjust uh, 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 surprise, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, having this basic uh, consciousness. And if we can build computers which are aware and can be surprised much more than we, they can be also much more conscious than we. And uh, it may sound like a completely ridiculous, crazy idea, but think how people were thinking about gravity thousands of years ago. If I would tell you thousands of years ago that apple falling on the floor is governed by the same laws as planets moving on the celestial spheres high in the sky, it would sound uh, completely ridiculous. But uh, here uh, I'm uh, saying that maybe this our magic consciousness is nothing else, just a uh, 
qualitatively nothing, nothing else than uh, uh, what single cells experience. And there is more about it in our paper, so I'd like to thank you for uh, inviting me here and for uh, uh, granting agencies and our, my collaborators on this project. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Arthur. I think uh, people will, will reflect on questions very soon. There's